Every successful artist, dead or alive, has a professional CV, and you should too. My name is Dan Pavsik. I also go by Infinite Prototype. I'm an artist and creative professional living and working in New York City. If you're new here and you like what you see, go ahead and comment on the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll be making a lot more content for artists going forward. A CV or curriculum vitae is a document that serves as a detailed record of all your professional experiences and accomplishments as an artist. You can think of it as your artist resume. It helps industry professionals such as gallery owners, curators, or even potential collectors understand your journey as an artist. To these industry professionals, your CV showcases your dedication your professionalism and your commitment to your artistic practice. Now, if you don't have a CV and you're sitting here thinking that sounds dumb and you don't wanna do it, I get it. It's another document, it's another thing, another thing the industry says you have to do and you're not really sure why it's this old legacy format, but try to understand it from the perspective of someone who runs a gallery or an art space. They have cost associated with running that space. And it's hard to justify taking a risk on an artist who can't show their experience or exhibition history. A well-organized and professional CV is something you'll have with you throughout your entire career. It'll enhance your visibility and make you seem more professional in the art world. Okay, now let's break down what's actually on a CV. Typically an artist CV includes the following sections. These first three are non-negotiable. You need to have them at the top. Starting at the very top is contact information. Name, email address, website. Underneath your contact information, you're gonna put your education. That'll be any relevant academic degrees, art courses, or workshops you might've taken. Underneath education is where your exhibitions will go. That should be like the bulk of your CV. Usually people break out the exhibition sections into solo exhibitions at the top and group exhibitions at the bottom. If you're just starting out and you don't have solo exhibitions, that's totally fine. You're gonna wanna include the date of the exhibition, the title, the venue, and the location. Location meaning state or country that it was in. After exhibition, these next sections can kind of go in whatever order you want, depending on how relevant they are to you. You can have a publications or bibliography section. These two terms are kind of interchangeable depending on what you put there, but generally they will include books, catalogs, magazines, newspapers, interviews, critical reviews, anything like that that you've been in, include there. And again, always include the date, title, and the publisher. If it's online, include a link to a publication. After that, you can have residencies and fellowships, pretty self-explanatory, any residencies or fellowships you participated in, again, date, title, location. I'm gonna be saying that a lot. After that, we have awards and grants. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Any scholarships, grants, or financial awards you might've received. After that, we have collections. That'll be any public or private collections that might own your work. If it's a private collection that owns your work, just make sure you get the person's permission before you put their private name down on your CV. Some people may not like that. Now, I know there's probably a few people out there who are sitting there watching this thinking, I don't have any shows, I'm new to this, I don't know what to put on my CV to start with, and that's okay. Everyone starts from somewhere, everyone starts at no shows, everyone starts at one show. You can include the show at your local library, you can include any time you've put work in a cafe, or maybe you did an artist market somewhere. Think of anywhere around you that you have shown your work to other people. That's your start for your CV. That's what you should have as your number one building block. Now there's a few different ways you can go about building out your CV. I recommend either Google Doc or InDesign file. A Google Doc because it's free and more accessible and an InDesign file because you get a little bit more control over the formatting and typefaces that you put on it. You should always keep two versions of your CV, a short version and a long version. The short version is for applications and your website. The long version is for your archive. It serves as detailed record of every single exhibition or show you've ever been in. The short version is meant to be a condensed version of that showing only your best of the best that you participated in. You'll always wanna have a link to your CV on your website. That link should open in a separate tab and be a downloadable PDF for whoever is viewing it. You wanna make it as easy as possible for someone who's interested in you to download your CV and have it on record. Now, if you stuck around this long, I've got something to say thank you. Down in the description will be a link to a free artist CV template that you can download. 
just plug in your own information, maybe change up the font if you want, and you're good to go. Okay, guys, there you have it. That's what a professional artist CV is. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a comment or a like. Subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing. I'm going to make a lot more content for artists going forward, and I appreciate everyone that's watched so far. Have a nice day.